bathroom. What's going on? Can you hear me? Oh, I need to turn up my mic. Hold on. All right. Now, that's better, I think, right? I was just doing some recording. Uh, I was actually recording banjo. So I had to turn my mic down because banjo's loud. I'll show it to you in a second what I was doing. It's kind of cool. Um, the composer actually wanted the banjo to be out of tune because it was kind of this quirky, kind of weird sound. Wonderful afternoon with Tom and others. And you guys make it wonderful. You guys are so kind to each other. Appreciate it. Hey, Paul, good to see you here. Uh, let's see, I gotta, I gotta back up here a bit. But Kimberly, you're here. I saw Kathy was on for a minute, uh, but she will be staying off of chat. And I got a fly in here, which is driving me crazy. I bought an Amish fly swatter. <laughs> That's literally a fly swatter made by the Amish. It's not like some, like a joke or something. It sounds like a joke, like like a joke I told you before. You know what goes clippity clop, clippity clop, bang bang, clippity clop, clippity clop. An Amish drive-by shooting. <laughs> you can use that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, Jim is here. Tom is here. I'm here. This Tom. That Tom. Uh, I was not referring to myself in the third person, which is one of the uh, infractions for which you must take a sip. So make sure you have libations handy. I've got my Starbucks Venti uh, Pike, which is, cracks me up because they, you can get a grande, a venti, and a tall. Three different languages, me, all meaning big. <laughs> so, and then with, with it, Trente is like, is just a made up word, I think. Uh, let's see, Bonnie's here, Diane's here, Hook is here, Kimberly, Jim Horst. Uh, usually if Bonnie's here, Jim's here, or vice versa. Paul Becker is here, Jim, let's see, Roger's here. Oh, Roger, by the way, I got your, uh, I got your email, uh, sorry, touching my face, so that's a, an, that is an infraction. In the coronavirus era. Uh, I got your email. Sorry, uh, I don't check my Gmail very often. I need to check it more because I got a uh, some ad agency wants to use one of my videos in their ad, um, and so I've got to reach out. And that they emailed me like five days ago, so I don't know if it's too late or not. But uh, but a lot. But it was a YouTube video that they wanted to use, and um, a lot of. Um, it, a, a lot of the advertising going on right now, if you, you know, obviously you've all noticed that, is very coronavirus centric and uh, stay at home centric. So I guess they were going to use it as like an example of somebody staying at home and playing guitar or something. I don't know. But they wanted the low. I was like, isn't it going to be too low of quality? But I think they actually want that. Uh, but Roger, you hit, hit me to the. And actually, that I did know that. Uh, I didn't know the name for it. Um, and uh, the. Um, uh, the thing, what, so what happens is, and I notice this like when I, when I take my guitars to church and I pick them up, you know, after uh, they've been in there for, you know, you set them up and they turn the AC, crank the AC up. And what, so basically what's happening is you've got wood and steel expand and contract at different rates. And so uh, if the wood expands more than the steel does in the same time frame, then uh, the strings are going to be sharp and so on and so forth. Something to that effect. I'm paraphrasing, but basically, I've understood that to be the case. It's just, 
it just cracks me up that it happens to a guitar that, you know, has been in the room the whole time. Um, but I'm glad, I'll see. <laughs> Dang, Kathy, your head and eyes are still no good. Uh, yeah, we're moving on. We're going to do some strumming things. So you may not have to look at the screen too much. The, um, uh, and then, uh, also I probably mentioned you like a hundred times yesterday, but half the time I was saying Bonnie when I meant you. <laughs> so Ben is here. Uh, Bruce is here. Reed is here. Good to see you again, Reed. Ed is here. Uh, let's see. Peter's here. Paul. Uh, Keith R. Did I get you already? I'm working my way down. Sorry. Uh, David Sillers. Dave Alsop. I see you. That name sounds really familiar. Verdi, hey! Uh, okay, uh, uh, David's got a, got a, uh, wait, oh, Pepper's here, good, okay. So, Reed is here, Old Man Zen is here, wow, everybody's showing up today. What are we looking at here? Let me see the, uh, ah, we got 28 right now. Oh, Bavar, good to see you. No way. Three inches of snow up in Vermont. Oh, my God. I heard you guys were going to get it, but I, that's just crazy. I mean, it's 89 today. I'm not rubbing it in. I'm just telling you. Uh, Beth and I went for a walk, got about eh, 7,000 steps in. And then I had a session this morning. Um, I'm going to do more after we're done. Um, ba -da -bum -bum. Oh, Mark. Hey, Mark. How's it going? Cost-effective linear expansion. My physics was class wasn't wasted. Exactly. Uh, that's funny, Mark. Finally paid off. <laughs> All that stuff. You, Mark, you and uh, you and Roger would get along. Thermal expansion. Yeah. Uh, you and you and Roger would get along great. Probably my son Jack too. Uh, he's an engineer. Just grad got his master's at USC. Actually graduates next week but no ceremony, unfortunately, which is a bummer. My daughter graduated, let's see, it would have been yesterday and no ceremony, and that's a bummer. So it's got to be weird, but uh, um, yeah, I'll send the heat east. It's headed your way. It always leaves us and goes east. So it's like if we get, if it's hot here, it's going to be really hot in Vegas and Nevada, or Vegas and uh, Phoenix. Um, but yeah, so I was doing a, a session. We also, the gardeners got here at about 6.50 this morning and cut down a big hedge in our yard uh, that was uh, uh, in, kind of infringing on our neighbor's space as well. So we had them do that. Um, home ownership. <laughs> my, my, the, man, the owner of the building we used to manage said, get ready to have your wallet or your checkbook out. And he wasn't wrong, but I fully expected that. Nothing, nothing surprising. Yeah, it's always snowing somewhere, Mount Everest. Um, so we're going to talk about strumming and grooving. I put those two together because uh, strumming is kind of what I think about when uh, I think about playing rhythm on acoustic and grooving is kind of what I think about when I say, think about playing rhythm on electric. So we're going to we're going to get some fun fundamentals. Um, I may teach you a little bit about um, reading notation, but very, very minor stuff, not like what we've done before. Um, it should be fairly easy, fairly introductory, so this will be a good one. Um, Kathy, uh, let me know you're around. I'll, I'll hit you up at the end, and you may have to log in. I, I'm, I've got a Michigan story for later, so it's actually a two-parter, and uh, so I want to make sure you hear it. But if you if you log off, let me know, or you're going to log off, let me know, and I won't. I'll save the story for another time. Um, and then Pepper, the reason I'm, I'm glad you're here because you can psychoanalyze my story. <laughs> Cause it's gonna be one. It's gonna be like, oh, Tom. Actually, it's not. It's just a story. It's not. Uh, it's something that happened. Uh, my reaction to it now is far more philosophical than it was at the time, <laughs> say the least. Um, but uh, um, so anyway, the um, uh, I've said this before. Somebody, you know, I often get asked. Um, I get a lot. You know, a lot of questions on YouTube. And I am often asked, what's the most important thing to learn? And again, people are looking for that magic bullet and it's just not going to be there. But um, I, I do say that on, on acoustic, one of the most important things to learn, if not the most important thing, is a lot of different strumming grooves. Um, I mean, I, I just loaded a drum beat that we can play along with instead of playing along with a click. 
which I, you know, you know me, I like playing along with a drum beat better than a click. Um, but that's one of the things you can do too, is just listen to the drums of a song and try to imitate it with the strumming, whatever that means. Um, and so, you know, like if it's boom, boom, cat, boom, boom, ka, boom, boom, ka, boom, boom, you know, the kick, kick, snare, kick, kick, snare, you know, you might, you might be something like, and, and that's a groove and you just imitated a drummer and that, and that's where it's really, um, important to, to listen when you're a musician. That's really most of the job. And, um, and a lot of guitar players will only listen to guitar players. It's like, oh, I want to learn all the... And I, get, I got some of my best... Um, I got some of my best licks from sax players, from listening to jazz sax players, from listening... I loved... Uh, growing up, I really loved David Sanborn. I mean, it was just... I loved his tone. I loved his vibe. I loved his licks, his, the way he played through phrases. Just really loved his playing, so I would jam along with his records all day long and just imitate them. And so I got a lot of my phrasing and my, my you know, from listening to um, to sax players, also piano players, but they're a little harder to em emulate because they can kind of bang away at two hands and do all sorts of crossover stuff that we can't do. Um, but also synth players who tend to play monophonic lines, you can imitate. Like I used to listen to Keith Emerson a lot because I was a big Emerson Lake and Palmer fan as a kid. And so I probably unconsciously imitated a lot of Keith Emerson's licks. Um, and then for rhythm playing, I, I really, you know, listening to a drummer is almost imperative, uh, because, um, you know, that's where the, that's the foundation of the band. I always say, you know, if, if you, if you're going to, if you want to start a band, start with a good drummer and then build on a, build on that. Um, to me, that's really the most important element. And then you can build on it from there. But, um, but yeah, listening to drumming, uh, strumming, and so what maybe I, I may do is just kind of pull up some random drum that I won't even know what they are and see if I can imitate them. Um, and that may be something we may do later, but I really do think that, uh, oh, Gary's, Gary's got the, got the uh, 10 rules, the, the, um, the Tom Command Sips. <laughs> it's now Tom's 10 Command Sips, right? We got to 10. Uh, can, oh yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll show you that. That's just a, it's a, all that is is a guitar banjo, and I, I was using that today, um, uh, but um, it's uh, I was using that today on my session. So what it is, it generally, I don't have it tuned like a guitar right now, but it's tuned like a guitar. So you can play it really, I was reading, uh, the, was it this? Yeah, this was what I was reading for a session, and you can see, you know, it, I don't want to read that on a, on a five string banjo that's tuned to open G. I don't want to have to think about it. And I want the range of a guitar. So, so I bought that thing. It's, it wasn't expensive. Uh, is it a Gretsch? It may be a Gretsch. I think it's a, let me see. Yeah, it's a Gretsch. It's, it's new. They, they came out with it and it's just a, a guitar banjo. I mean, there are better ones. Um, I, I actually like that one because it kind of has a, again, kind of a lo-fi quality, which for this composer, I've used it a lot. In fact, that's the banjo I used the bottle cap banjo on. It just sounds crazy to play. I call it bottle cap banjo. You know, crack, crack, crack. It sounds like, you know, it's like, it's this nasty murders, murdery sound. Um, so yeah, I'll show you that in a second because I actually did something weird with it um, and uh, for, the, for the game. It's for a, a, a new game. And I'll tell you, the game composers are busy right now. And I just... I just got, I did something yesterday for, oh, and yeah, another game. So I, yeah, for a no, total different composer. So it's been, um, oh, I'm wearing pants. That's not a sip thing, but I'll tell you though, after my walk, I was this close to putting on shorts. <laughs> Coming home, I was like, oh man, it's hot in the house. <laughs> uh, but, um, so, one of the, um, I think, let me see how many we have on here, because I want to I wanna make sure we're, we've got a fair, good, oh, good, we got 40, that's plenty. Okay. Hey there, everybody. Who else is logged in? Is Gary, besides Gary. Um, Dennis is here now. Yeah, you saw my banjo yesterday, the five string. I played a little bit of that. Uh, so, that, yeah, that one's different. Um, and so we'll play, and I'm actually going to get out my tenor banjo for another section of the game. 
I have a 1920 Gibson tenor banjo, which is like the Dixieland thing. Um, I got one of those uh, a couple, few years ago. I told you about that. So I actually am going to use it on this game, which is cool, because I don't think I've ever used it on anything. So, When do I put on the AC? I don't really have to. We don't ever have to turn on the AC here. This house stays really cool. Uh, my office was warm because I was recording. Um, and when I record, I shut all my doors. I have multiple doors here. And I shut all the doors so that there's less noise. I even shut the windows and everything. Uh, so it's really quiet in here. Um, we have... A, a brand new roof that's like uh it's really good at keeping the heat out they put we got fans up there that turn on with um uh that turn on with temperature sensors so i have the ac set at a 80 so if, if the house gets over 80 it'll kick on and i think since it was 90 this week in the 90s high 90s they even hit 100 a couple days ago um, I think it kicked on once for about 15 minutes, and that was it. This house is really well. Everything, the walls are super insulated. The, the, the windows are all double-paned, and we have plantation shutters on every window. So we got like three layers of, of cooling, so it's great. Yeah, Peter, you can, yeah, you, you don't have AC. I, yeah, I know, I remember in Michigan, that, you know, it's like, in Michigan, like at our cottage, we didn't have AC. We just had a heater. Uh, you just open the windows. In the in summer, I mean, summer, in, you know, summer in Michigan rarely gets over 80. It's pretty rare. Um, so one of the things that uh, I should have, I should have gotten a, a GIF. Uh, a, I don't know if GIFs, if I could import a GIF into this and it would work. But one of the things I want you to think of when you're playing strumming is thinking of those metronomes that you would sit on the piano. Uh, the, the brown ones, the wooden ones that have the arm that goes click. Like they're really kind of fascinating, you know. You slide that thing down and they go click, 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 click. <laughs> it's like, that's like your first physics lesson right there. Is it? That's, a, that's physics too, right, Peter? And uh, I'm, I'm not Peter, uh, 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 Roger. And then somebody else trying, hey, Warren, good to see you. Uh, Warren, let's see. Um, who was it that said that, that was talking about engineering? Let's back a bit. So it was a new person too. I like to acknowledge the new people. Everybody welcomes you. Oh, Mark. Yeah, Mark McIver. Mc, uh, um, uh, yeah, so those metronomes, you know, Kathy's mom has one of those. I, I, I want to have a GIF and have it sitting there so you can see it, but you know what I'm talking about. And that's what you want to think of your arm as. Your arm should be, if you, if you kind of think of it this way, this is your, your metronome, okay? You want to keep it going. You want to keep that arm moving. The temptation is, and I'm going to play what I call the standard folk groove. Um, we're not going to play it yet. We'll work up to it. I have videos on this. I've got a lot of strumming videos. I've, re, I've revisited all of them, too, uh, because I had some old ones. And I'm like, you know, I've gotten to the point now where I'm reshooting a lot of old ones because my videos look better. Uh, I have, be you know, better ways of restating. Um, but... So uh, the standard, the standard um, folk groove is this. And the, so the pattern is down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up. But if I miss the strings and don't hit anything, it just looks like I'm going one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... So if I hit all, all the beats, which is what we're going to do today, if, we, if I do that, um, then, uh, then you can kind of hear every movement. But if I, I'm actually choosing to miss the strings at some point. Well, if I only move my arm when I'm hitting the strings, it's going to look like this. I think there's some Elvis movies where he's doing that. You know, he's singing and pretending to play, and his arms kind of going. Da, 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 da. I even had uh, an actor that I was working with <laughs> on a TV show, and um, <laughs> totally wasn't supposed to do this, but nobody told me not to. But unions are funny. They'll be like they're super like um, super particular about who does what. Like you can't do something you're not 
allowed to do or something. I don't know. I've gotten in trouble with unions uh, on sets before, but but uh, so there's there were two guitar two two actors that I coached on guitar playing, and one of them could play fine um, and was great, and um, and then the other one was. Um, uh, oh, I wonder if I can find that scene. That would be pretty cool. Uh, the other one was not very good. In fact, he really had no sense of time or anything, but he was kind of the star of the show. Um, and so there's a scene where he's playing for his high school reunion and the other guy's playing in the band with him. But the scene the scene that he's playing in, he was trying to strum. So, what I, so he was lip syncing along with it and pretending to play the guitar. And so what I did was I actually got up on a ladder and stood above the crowd so that he could see me and I'm up on this ladder and I'm just, I don't have a guitar in my hand. I'm just going like this so that he can match his hand to mine. So he, he's like, if you watch the show, you can kind of see him glance up at me. You don't know what he's looking at, but he's watching my hand. He's really trying really hard to lock in. The other guy I actually hand doubled uh, because they had this one thing. It was like, let's see if I can find, I wonder if I can find that on YouTube. Uh, what was the name of that character? Mm-mm-mm. That would be funny. You guys would get a kick out of that. Uh, I can look for it later, too. But it's... it's uh, So that was another job I did. I mean, it's like literally I had to learn this part. And then and they they showed... My, they, it's, it's, he's an alien. It was The show was called The Neighbors. Um, uh, let's see. And I have to look up the, I'd have to look up the, the character's name because that would be how I'd find the video. Tom searches Google, I know, right? <laughs> so bad. Anyway, I just, it's pretty funny. So, um, but he, he was having a really hard time kind of locking in and that's what we want to do. So you're probably going to be staring at my arm and trying to lock in and we're going to keep it real simple. Um, the groove is basically right here. Okay. Um, so there's three things going on there. There's uh, eight eighth notes, okay? And those, notice those aren't notes. Those are slash, head, or those are like slashes. We call them slashes. And they're joined with the, um, the stems, and the stems are joined vertically in groups of four. It's easy to look at in groups of four. You could do groups of two. You really wouldn't want to do group of eight, even though it's eight eighth notes. You really don't. You want to break it up into some kind of easy to see chunk. Um, I did the 16th notes and you, you, you broke, I broke those up into beats. So it's each one of those is one beat. If you had stems connecting all 16 across there, it would be, it would be hard to keep track of where you were. Um, so that makes it a little bit easier to read. And then the numbers and the, and the end symbols, the amp ampersand, that's an ampersand. Uh, I forget. Oh, that thing's called a carrot. Yeah. So I, uh, The, um, oh, Christopher, I'm glad you're here. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed the blues lessons. That's so, I'm so glad. Um, but um, the, uh, the, the numbers are just stand for the beats, one, two, three, four, and then the, the, the upstrokes, the notes in between those are, the, are just the ands of the beats. So you would count it one and two and three and four and, and then the Ds and the Us just stand for downs and ups. I tried to find little up and down um, symbols in, Finale, but I couldn't find it. I, I'm sure they're in there somewhere, but um, it's I've been using finale for years, but uh, I, I just haven't gotten too deep into it. I, I, I know enough to, to do the things I need to do on it. I'm using about 1% of its capability. But So if I were to play like an E chord, this would sound like... And that would be pretty straight, right? One and two and three and four and... Down, up, down, up, down. You really can't hear where the downbeat is. You can't hear where... The, you can tell the difference. You can sonically tell the difference between a downbeat or a down strum and an up strum. Because they sound different. In slow motion. It kind of sounds like that. Uh, it, you know, at full speed. But um, the, the, um, the, what we can do is we can put accents on different beats to practice doing that. And that's not a bad idea. So we do 
One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. You could also do two and four. One and three. Now those are exaggerated. You probably wouldn't ever use them that exaggerated. But having a, having a, having that accent, an accent just means playing it a little bit louder. Um, having that accent will um, will kind of help you keep track of where you are. It'll it'll give the listener a sense of where where uh, where the beat is. And then of course, if you're changing chords, obviously we're not going to sit on one chord, so you'll know where one is if you change on one, like this. Because I don't want you to worry about your left hand over here, this guy. Okay, uh, we're just going to concentrate on. Uh, we're just going to play a D chord. Okay, I and mean, we could go to G or something. I may change up just so we're not bored. Okay, let me play a drum groove, and this one is at ninety. Let's see what, how it feels. I could even imitate that with just the accent. Four. One, two, three, four. You hear the snare? Oh, that's weird. It didn't drop a beat, it just had a weird fill. Let me get rid of that fill. Sounds like an extra beat. Oh, maybe it's just because. Four, one. Oh, it's cutting off the intro. That's weird. Why are you doing that? It's cutting off the first hit. Should not do that. All right, let me delete. Or may oh, we. You know what? Yeah. No, that's exactly right on the beginning. That shouldn't. That's weird. Did it there, but when I get to the end and it repeats, <laughs> it doesn't play the downbeat. That's so weird. Okay, uh, let me, I can make it even simpler, but I don't think that's gonna change anything. Uh, but this is drummer, which is, there we go, that's better. I, I don't know, it, it readjusted itself somehow. Um, but that, that software is called Drummer. And it's part of um, it's part of logic. Comes with logic, so it's cool. It's you got millions of varieties, un unlimited varieties. Um, so that's oh. So let me play <laughs> now that I got it going. Let me play. I'm not digging this groove, but two, three, four. want to accent that snare hit generally you know snares often hit on two and four one two three four but not always I mean you can have a syncopated pattern that's not at all like that so but this one I I made it as simple as I could just so that you could hear that Yeah, Reed, I see your question. Um, yeah, E, that's probably why I picked E, so you don't have to worry about it so much. I'll tell you a little secret. I'll give you a little trick. It doesn't hurt to know a little bit of theory. If you knew that, like, let's say, um, you're saying like on a C chord, there's only five strings. So how do you not hit that bottom string? In the case of a C chord, that E is actually in a C chord. There's three notes in a C chord, C, E, G, okay? So 
if you hit that string, it's not the end of the world. But you don't want to be banging it on a consistent basis or it's going to sound like a C over E chord, which is probably not what you want. It's going to be a muddy chord. You want a tighter sound. So one thing you can do is bring your thumb around. But if you're having a hard time getting C to ring out, then you need to keep your thumb back here. That precludes that. So what I usually tell students to do when they're trying to strum and they're hitting more strings than they need, and, and we don't really, we, we almost all open chords, they, they have strings on the bottom we don't want to hit, but not strings up on top. So if it's a four string chord like D, if it's a five string chord like C or you know a G chord, we don't have that problem, we just hit them all. But with C, what you can do is you can really kind of try to aim your hand to hit the top four strings. So try to get this string, this string, this string, this string. And then, you know, if you accidentally hit this one, you're golden. Eventually you'll get, and then you can also mute, um, like Verdi's saying, you can also mute um, a little bit of the low E string with your third finger up here. See that? And that really helps focus. I'm, I'm lazy, I, I, I don't have a problem making C chord ring out, so I bring my thumb around, you'll see that. Even with a D chord, I'll do the same. I may even mute two strings. See, I'm actually muting two strings with my thumb right here on the D chord. All right, here we go. Um, and so, but that's because I don't have a problem with the D chord. I, I wouldn't, you know, if I'm doing every breath you take, which we learned the other day is the most played song on the history of the radio, 11 million radio spins. That's crazy. And that doesn't include the, the, the hip hop song that, that used the, the hook. Uh, let's see, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. A question from Reed. Thank you, Bruce. Yeah, so I think that's what you were asking me, right? Um, are you going to get into the strings that you could strum within each chord, like for example? Yeah. Um, and then, let's see. Um, what was the other? Oh, Bavar, you had a question. I have a new guitar gifted me. Uh, it has seven strings. <laughs> <laughs> What's the seven? Well, it depends. Uh, the, generally, it's a low B. Um, a low B on the seven string. But yeah, Gary's right. The question It's very rare to have the seven string on the high end, but uh, there was a jazz guitar player that had that. Uh, I forget his name. Uh, but he would have a high A string, so he could play really high. Uh, but generally, seven strings. If it's a, if it's like a Ibanez or something like that, it's probably <laughs> adding a low string. Um, okay. Yeah, and your fingers will start to mute. Um, okay, now Gary, you're asking. Oh, I see. Oh, Gary, they're talking about the seven, the seven string. Yeah. Yeah. Pepper's like, what the heck? I know, right? And I've got a, I've got a lute. Um, Yep, that looks right, old man. Zen, that looks right. That's probably what it is. Yeah, and so like I said, one of the things you can do is just, just you know, it's kind of like pulling up short. Uh, when, you know, uh, <laughs> when you're landing a plane, you know, <laughs> you don't want to go over the edge of the runway. You know, it's kind of like on a, on a D chord. And you can really just kind of aim for the top three strings, but that means you're not going to have a D, a low D in it. But then you're gonna, you can just kind of start moving your pick a little further to the north, I guess. You could call this north. Um, you'll get much better at aiming with time. You'll get much more. I, I mean, I, I, can, I can probably play. And that's the other thing, too. A lot of our, our strumming progressions might have a bass note at the beginning. And that may be why they did that. that. That's maybe why that's so common is because the folk players that started doing it wanted to make sure that you heard the C note in the bass, okay? But then, so they hit it by itself. So it wasn't a big strumming motion. It was a, like a single motion. And then they went strumming the top string. So it was kind of like this 
-hmm. almost like a piano left hand, right hand thing. You know, boom, da, 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 boom, da, 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 boom, da, 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 da. And that's kind of what you do. So I'm not muting that low E string, and yet I'm still not hitting it. But that just takes time. Um, but if you can bring your thumb around, you don't have to think about it. Um, if you, uh, hopefully that answers the question. A big fake thumb. <laughs> I don't know what a big, th I don't either. I don't know what a big fake thumb is. Uh, so if you're playing, uh, Verdi says, Bonnie Lee, if you're playing C, you can just position your ring finger to touch the uh, sixth string a little bit. Yeah, you can. Um, yeah, and you just kind of put the finger a little bit more on the meat of your finger, a little bit deeper here rather than on the tip, more this way, and then you can use the tip of the finger to kind of mute the... Um, once you get the chord down, you'll, you'll probably catch yourself doing this. And I really <laughs> apologize in advance that I'm not using proper technique, but it's just it's because I don't have to. I, I can make it sound good. But see, if you're having trouble, if your C chord sounds like this, and you can't get those open strings to ring out, it's because you're laying these fingers down too much, and you got to bring your hand around. Remember, I had you put a, a a wad of paper right here in the palm of your hand to keep to keep the palm of your hand away from the guitar. Okay. So um, let me pull up that drum pattern again, and we're gonna just keep some of that. Oh, by the way, the beat, the tempo on this is 90. right now and notice you're missing the strings on the upstrokes one two three four down 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 hear the snare drum keep going Now let's try to do the upstrokes with it. So it'll be one, one and two and three and four and. Three. Now, a little pro tip here: if you want to play a reggae feel, just play the upstrokes. That's just the upstrokes. You should do that with someone. Just play one of you play if you're jamming together. Play one of you plays the downstrokes, the downbeats, and somebody else play the upstrokes. See if you can get this to sound like this. Okay, let's try to accent one, three, four. Oh yeah, strumming, genre, strumming is all genre. I mean, if we want to do a ska, it would be... Uh, be too. That'd be the upstrokes of a 16th note pattern. 16th notes would be twice as fast. So, okay, so let's do this. Let's go, uh, the, let's go back to E. Nice big rock and roll power chord kind of sound, right? And let's do all, all the eighth notes, but let's do them all with downstrokes, okay? So it's gonna be like this. One. So I'm going downstrokes. Is that, is that too fast for you all?
Okay, so now this is pretty cool. I can, I'm gonna take this drum. Now I can add another drummer in. Okay, I'm gonna add a different, I'm gonna add a track. I'm gonna add a drummer and it's gonna ask me what's what genre and I'm gonna say, not rock, not alternative, not songwriter, not R&B, electronic. Ah, let's go with hip hop. So I'm gonna create a hip hop groove now and <laughs> check this out. So I'm gonna mute that one we just had. I've got, oh, I gotta drag it over to the, all the way over here. Oh, it's really far over. <laughs> I gotta drag it a long way. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here's what I had. This is just, I haven't done anything to it yet. This is the, the previous one. And here's the new, here's the new one. <laughs> wow, that's too busy. So I can click on it and get rid of all the fills. It's fun, hilarious. Oh, it's way too many fills. Okay, I just got rid of it. Get rid of the hand claps. I can simplify. It's got an XY thing. It's simple, complex, soft, loud. So I can I can change it just that easily. It's pretty cool. Oh, you knew that was a nine chord. Very good. We're gonna do. That's the one we're gonna do for the electric section of this lesson. Totally different. I'm still doing. All down strokes in two and three and four. Okay. <laughs> now I may actually go back to that groove um, for uh, when we do the 16th notes. Because we're going to do, we're going to do ninth chord. Like Verdi noticed, Verdi's ear is getting better. That was pretty awesome that you heard that. I call that the I call it the James Brown chord, right? E9, E flat nine, E9, E9, E flat nine, E9, E flat nine. Actually, that's how I that's how I buy the. Um, okay, I'm changing guitars so we can all take a sip. Oh, hey, babe. Um. So, uh, uh, so let's take a sip because I changed guitars. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me just. Um, let me see. Got, let me tune this real quick. And um, not that it really matters. But when I go to, when I'm looking for another, for, for another Squire, I just, I'm really more interested in the sound of the pickups than anything. Um, I don't really care how, how it plays and I can do the int intonation myself. And I don't really ever use the whammy bar. Um, I have this one in for some reason, but I don't really use it. So I, um, I just put, the, put it in the neck pickup and crank, go in, get a really clean amp, like a Fender Twin, turn it up pretty loud, plug it in and just go. And if it sounds like James Brown, then I buy the guitar. <laughs> That's all I need. I don't really need a whole lot more than that. If I can get this thing to, you know, sound. I was using this, I used this yesterday on a track. Um, I thought it sounded really good. Uh, where was the track? It was on this session. Um, was it? Well, yeah, this one I just started. I haven't finished it. Um, <coughs> all I got so far. <laughs> so it'll have bass and keys on there and I'll probably put a slide guitar on there or whatever. But that's, um, uh, that's just a $99. Uh, it just sounds nice and spanky and kind of lo-fi and garagey and, you know, like it's been sitting in a bar just hanging on a wall or something. You just pick it up and play it. Um, okay. 
So um, if you're playing electric guitar, you can also do we can so let's do um let's do the strumming pattern. I'm gonna change guitars one I'm gonna go back to the acoustic so you all can take a sip again. I know how much you like to take sips. The uh, let's just do this all downstroke. So going one and two. Before you can play 16th notes, you have to be able to play 8th notes with just downstrokes. So that's not what's written there. What's written here is... Now, I mentioned too that um, everybody kind of has their own swing, their own... Uh, distance between their eighth notes and their quarter notes. The quarter notes should all be down on the downbeat. There shouldn't any be any distance between quarter notes. One, two, three, four. But if you want, if you play really straight, it's a little bit robotic sounding, but it's totally fine because a lot of patterns are that way. When you get going fast, Those are pretty much straight 16th notes. Um, but but you can also. Da, 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 that's swung. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Straight would be. Right? That's a robot. It's a woodpecker. <laughs> I've never heard a woodpecker sw swing before. But sometimes you want to be the woodpecker. <laughs> Just I don't like the way that sounds. Be the woodpecker. So, and if we're doing all down, remember when I was doing the blues? I was doing all down strokes, and I was swinging. Bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum. By Prince, yeah. Uh, yeah, right. That, what is, that's sixteenth notes. You're right. I love that. Feel. That's a great you note. Know, that's actually the groove we're going to ultimately get to. Believe it or not, not today, but uh, like I said, with acoustics, I call it um, strumming. With electrics, I call it grooving. So uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna get there potentially. Okay. So. Um, let me put the drum beat on again, and we're gonna play a little bit more with that. Hopefully it's not too fast. And I don't think there's swing on that pattern. If there is, it might be in the 16th notes. No swing on it. See, I could swing it. Hear that? Back to straight. It's crazy, crazy program. So that's right. Now, if you can, let's do all down. One, two, three. One and two and three. All down strokes. Chords. Let's go to G. Actually, let's go to C. Let's go to C and practice not hitting the sixth string, <laughs> okay? Or muting with our third finger or muting with our thumb. Two, three, four. All down strokes. One and two and three and four. Okay. Now try one and down, up, down.
Now, let's go, let me stop this maddening drum machine. I'm gonna change, I'm gonna undo this one here. Um, I'm gonna delete this one. And I'm gonna add um, another drum, but I'm gonna go with an R&B feel, because I think that that's probably something we'll be more likely to use. Let's see what this sounds like. Um, and we're gonna do this um, with the electric guitar. I'm keeping the tempo at, at 90. That's a good 16th note tempo. Um, let's see what this sounds like. Nah. Let's see. Let's see what Curtis says. So what we want to do with the electric, pick up the electric, and the chord we're going to make is an E9 chord, as Verdi duly noted. The chord is, um, here it's going to be X, um, let's see, what is that? 7, 6, 7, 7, 7, and that's an E9 chord. Great chord, fun chord, and it's, it's, uh, Completely movable because we're not using any open strings. All right. So, um, so the way you play this chord, and your third, your second finger is going to mute the bottom string. The the nice thing about this chord is though, it is an E nine chord, so you can have that E string ring out. Um, sorry, I got to check something. And um, ugh, there we go. So, um, but we're actually not going to play, we're going to have our hand here, but we're not going to play it. So just because you can't get a sound out of it doesn't matter right now. Um, but basically you play nothing on the bottom string and then on the fifth string at the seventh fret, you uh, have uh, your second finger, then your first finger on the sixth fret of the fifth, fourth string, and then you're going to lay your third finger down on the top three strings at the seventh fret. Okay, you can even start with that. I think that's almost a better way to think of this chord. Is starting with that finger and then try to get these other two here. It's kind of like playing a C2 chord, but come up here and then lay down that third finger and get that. Okay, and the notes, just so you know, no quiz on this. I'll take a sip, a celebratory sip. And we're going to work on the 16th note pattern now. The, um, the notes on it are E, which is the root, G sharp, which is the third, D, which is the seventh or flat seventh, F sharp, which is the ninth, and B, which is the fifth. So you have all of them. One, three, five, seven, nine in order. So be it. It almost sounds like the, the horn line from that. Okay? So that's kind of, I call it the James Brown chord. All right. But what we want to do is not actually squeeze this. We're just going to lay the fingers in that position at the seventh fret. Yep. And this is grooving. So that, that's kind of the thing that we want to work towards, that kind of feel, which you, you can't really hear because I don't have a sound up. Um, let me pull up. I don't know if you could hear that at all. Let me get in a, a, a good, clean sound here. Some good, clean fun. Um, let's see. I can do... Input two. And then I'm not Googling anything. <laughs> I'm actually creating, finding a basic sound here that I can just play through. Um, yeah, I think this is gainier than I want, but let me just start with this and then I can move it. Yeah, that's a little bit more reverb than I want. I don't need that on. That reverb sounds nice. Whoa. Wow, that's really weird reverb. Turn it down. 
Oh, there's spring on here, I think, too. Okay, so that's where we're at. Um, thanks, Art. Good to see you. Okay, so I'm, I pull up a R&B sound. You know, before we do that, though, we probably should just try to get this. Let's just try to get some 16th notes together here. Okay. So I'm going down, up, down, up, down. So if you look at that, um, if you look at that rhythm pattern right there, it's one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and uh, one, two. You can see how I grouped them together. Standard notation practice. Three E and uh, four E and uh. So the tempo's really slow here. One, two, three. That's slower than 60. That's like less than 60 beats a minute. So you can just lay your hand like this too if you want. The idea is just to get the right hand. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start to accent different notes. So we'll squeeze when we want the chord. Sounds like this. Um, let's see what. One, two, three. So all I'm doing is I'm squeezing for different lengths different places and that create you create all these really cool you can just almost unlimited types of rhythms um so you know i'm missing the strings on some of these too but right now we're going to start by just hitting them all okay let me see what this tempo sounds like Not, this is 90. on the downbeats if you want, but two, three, four, you can count one, two, three, four, if you have the strumming down, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. a horn uh, a horn blast you're like a horn section I mean it's how you oftentimes how I would write horn parts I would imitate something I was doing on guitar ba 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 da 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 ba 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 da 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 ba that's how you're a horn section and a guitar player at the same time we're always just imitating other instruments I don't like guitar synthesizers. Though. Now. One, two, three. 
We can change chords. Let me uh, let me give you another chord. Uh, I'm sorry. Let me stop that. Boom. Stop. All right. Back to this Windows. I'm getting better at like getting all my Windows managed. Where is everybody? Is everybody playing or did, did I lose my live chat? Somebody chat something. Tom lost his live chat. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to have to bounce it out. That hasn't happened in a while, though. I wonder what happened. Okay. So, oh, maybe if I try to type something, it'll... So, another chord we could play is A minor 7. Uh, we could go, it'd be 5, 7, 5, 5, 5. 5, I think. This. Okay. Oh, I bet you. I'm, I'm sure my chat's messed up. Let me, let me move this out. Let's see if I can... Pop out chat. No. Nope. Looks like it's all there. All right. So the um, the A minor seven would be this. You could play it like this. And then so not squeezing it would look like this. Basically your first finger laying across. Um, the other thing you could do is play it like this. So we're kind of playing it like this. We're playing second finger on the uh, fifth bottom string, fifth fret. So it'd be five, and then X, and then five, 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 five. That's actually a little bit cleaner. I don't know how many fives do I have. One, two, three. Too many fives. Okay, here we go. This one is a common one, actually, too. The nice thing about this seventh chord <coughs> is it's got the a, the a there, and then the 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 seventh right here. So it's not too, like this one's a little bit muddy on the bottom side, especially for jazz. Oh, I see, there you go. Okay, so you can do it like that or like this. But the main thing to get is just that 16th note thing. You can move your hand that fast. One, two. Okay, we'll slow. I'll slow down. Um, I can slow down this tempo too. Let me see. What's this one at? So, like I said, that is 90. So let me take it down to 80. Um, and see what that sounds like. Okay, so here's 80. The same same groove. Yeah, a lot slower. Almost doesn't feel right because it, you know certain grooves have to be at certain tempos. So just sixteenth notes: one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e, two. Here's a snare hit. Pop, pop. One, two, three, four. What's weird, what's happening is, is that even though we're playing, we're grooving on the right hand. Great job, everyone. <laughs> I totally can't hear you at all. Um, so the groove is on the right hand, but yet the actual rhythm changes. The, the, the stabs, oh, horn stabs, that's the word I was looking for. Um, the stabs are being done with the left hand. So the placement of the stabs is going to be done with the left hand, but the right hand is going to kind of keep things going. Just think of yourself as a horn section. And so that's 
that's what I when I talk about um, electric guitar, I always call it, I call it more grooving. And when I talk about acoustic guitar, I talk about strumming. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do is um, tomorrow I'm going to we're going to do some more um, we're going to do some um, more acoustic grooves, and I will probably write them out. And we're we're going to take that this groove here, and we're gonna we're gonna put um, quarter notes on each of the four different beats. So it'll be one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three. So it's gonna be down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down. This is my coronavirus shirt, um, and then um, then we'll put the put um, make two the quarter note, and it'll be one and two, three and four, and one and two, three and four. Mainly just to kind of, so you can practice reading the notation, and also so you can practice missing strings, which is really the hard part about doing strum grooves, because remember, like, you, you want to only move your hand when you're hitting strings, but you have to practice not hitting strings. So you have to practice doing nothing. All right. Um, Bakker, is it Bakker? Are you still there? Um, I, I can pull up this banjo. So we're changing instruments yet again. It's kind of a cool little, um, I don't know, is that wood? It feels like, it sounds, it feels like plastic, it's probably plastic. It's just a cover though. So there's actually a gap here so the sound could get out. And I have it tuned down uh, two whole steps. So I have this tuned down just, just for now. Oh, let me go back to this screen here. Um, tuned down because the composer wanted it to sound like out of tune so one of the tricks I like to do is I will take the um, an instrument that whatever instrument I'm playing and I'll tune it down two whole steps so the strings are really really hard to play into Send that to one of my pop writers. Um, but the uh, it 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 just it makes it almost impossible to play out tune. And so this is not, this is C minor here. Uh, this would be C. So if I play a G chord, that's actually E flat. If I play C, it's actually A flat because I've tuned everything down a whole step. So that so this is just a it's a six string banjo though. So it, you can see it's got six strings, and so you can tune it like a guitar and you can play it like a guitar. Um, it, funny now because it's so it's tuned down so low but it allowed me to kind of get that I call it squishy squishy banjo if you tune something down a whole two whole steps and then what I did was I took the MIDI because I created this chart with MIDI and uh, the MIDI data that he sent me and then so I turned that into music notation and then what I did was on the MIDI I just I transposed it up two whole steps because I put the guitar down two whole steps. So then I just read this and this is up. So as you can see that, well, the first note is E. On this one, the first note was C, but because I tuned the guitar down two whole steps, where's the C? Where's that first note? Oh, right here. Because I tuned the guitar down two whole steps, the, uh, this E sounds like a C. So it's just a way of kind of, that way I don't have to transpose, I don't have to read this and then transpose up a third. It's just that I can, I can sight read this. It's a lot easier to read, and then it's already there. So pro tip. The other thing I did was for, okay, I'm changing guitars again. Uh, the other thing I did was on another, another track, um, I, he, he, this was the other, one of the other instruments on the track. And it was... Um, I looked at it and I went, without even listening to the, the sample, the, what he'd done, I, re, I figured, oh, he's going to want all of those notes to ring out. <laughs> he's, you know, so often keyboard players, when they write for guitar, they're like, oh, you can just, you know, hold the pedal down. Because I saw the pedal data on there. So you could see that, like, where the, the hold pedal on a piano is real easy. 
you know, you can just play a chord, let it ring, and then move your hands anywhere you want and play the next chord and lift up the pedal at the same time, and then everything rings forever. So uh, to be able to play that line, I did... Here's what I did. I did... Um, so the bottom three strings I didn't have to change, but I, I put my spider capo on. So I put this on. This is a capo that allows me to only capo one string or two strings or three strings or all six or whatever. It'd be pointless to use this for all six. Just use a regular capo for that. But it's weird looking. It looks like a spider. I just touched my nose. Well, we're getting a lot of sips in today. All right. I am not seeing a whole lot of chat here, which is weird. Um, let me just... Uh, -bum -bum. Let me bounce out this chat again. Huh. Weird. Okay. So. Um, so what I did was I put this at the third fret so I could play the, I wanted the B flat there. So the notes were C, F, G, B flat. Then he had C again, that's a B. So I tuned that up to C, the B string up to C. And then they needed an E flat. That's the chord he wanted, <laughs> ringing out. I didn't want to try to tune the G string up to B flat because it probably would have broken, but it turned out really cool. And I think one. That's what basically. The It's just, it's just weird how you, you know, I'll, I'll totally reinvent the instrument for, um, for a specific moment. Go back to standard. Okay. Now I'm getting all sorts of, see, it's so weird. So let's see, Bruce had a, let's see, uh, Leo regarding drum beats uh, from Logic. Okay. Leo, where was that? See, I think I went a long time without getting any chat for some reason. Oh, oh, wow, nice drumming. Is that, yes, that's Logic. It's called Drummer. The software is called Drummer. And it's free with Logic. Um, and it can do all, it's, it's billions and billions of possibilities. It's great. And actually, sound, the drum samples sound great. Um, let me get, let me get to my tuner. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. My chat was wonky too. Yeah. It froze. It basically, I, I can tell when I'm doing stuff that usually you all say sip, 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 sip. <laughs> so, and now it's like, uh, it has this weird thing called chat rate. I don't know what that is. Um, but Okay. Tuning back, Stan. Okay, so Kathy, are you still there? Is Kathy still around? I've got a two-parter story. It's a Mich it's a very Michigan story. I should probably play underscore. The chat is still not loading for some reason. So weird. Come on, guys. I know it's working. I mean, I, I'm no, I know I've got views. Um, pop out the chat again. Yeah, I don't think. 
Yeah, it's called. I'm going to type this again and see what happens. Yeah, see, it looks weird. Something's going on. Anyway. Um, so, so Kathy, I'm assuming you're there. But anyway, there's a, there's a river in Michigan called the Manistee. And uh, when my mom started dating this guy, and, I, you know, of course, you're never going to like the guy your mom's dating. And I was probably 13 or so. And, uh, and my uh, stepdad wanted to go out in canoes. And so it was my older sister and her friend in a canoe. It was me and my mom in a canoe and my little sister and my stepdad, or future stepdad, but I think they were just dating at the time, in another canoe. And, uh, and I'd never canoed before. Never done it. And uh, the... I'm trying to think, what's a good canoe? <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, the other thing about strumming too is you can go with a thinner pick. And it won't won't be so much resistance. Wow. Look at all. Hey Joseph, good to see you. So it's all of a sudden my chest catching up. I want to see what it looks like now on this. Analytic. See, yeah, the chat number is much higher. Okay. I think we're catching up. Question from Chris regarding blues. Can eight bars be one measure? No, I don't know what that means. I don't think so. But let me check. See, let me see if I can see this. Chris, let's see. Chris L. Oh. In blues, could eight bars be one measure? I don't know quite what that means. Eight strums? Or, um, yeah, you could do eight strums in one measure. Two. If you want to think of it as eight, but I would go one, a two, a three. No. Okay, Kathy's here. Yeah, I'm getting the story time a little early. Um, okay, so let's see. All right. Hey, Kwa Kwa. Keya, 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 whoever, however you say that. Um, but yeah, as, as far as your question, Chris, as far as it there could be eight bar blues, eight bar blues. It doesn't have to be 12 bar blues. It can be an eight bar blues. Yes, you could do that. Uh, as far as eight bars in one measure, I'm not sure what you mean. In one rotation. Yes, you could totally do that. Okay. So my story. So we're, so my, um, the six of us are going out in three canoes, right? And like I said, I've never canoed before. I don't know what I'm doing. My mom, I don't think she's ever canoed before. My stepdad, my future stepdad had canoed before. My daughter, my, my daughter, my, uh, my little sister had not. And my older sister and her friend, it didn't really matter that they never canoed before because we weren't on the river, but 30 minutes and uh, a huge pack of Boy Scouts came by. <laughs> And my 17-year-old sister and her friend just seemed to kind of get caught up in that whole pack of Boy Scouts. So they were hauling down the river at that point. And we were going with the flow of the river. We weren't going against it. And um, But my, my competitive nature was I, wa I didn't want my little sister to beat me. Already my older sister was going to beat me. So my little sister, she was getting ahead because my stepdad knew how to canoe. And I was just getting so frustrated oh I was miserable and then here we are in aluminum canoes and all of a sudden a thunderstorm rolls in right and uh it's lightning everywhere and I'm just thinking if we are in these canoes and lightning hits the water or anywhere near us we're gonna die because <laughs> we're just wearing swimsuits I don't even remember if we're wearing shoes or not you know and and so we're floating down, and, and the whole time we're floating down the river, I mean, I'm awful at the canoe. We're like, hit, my mom and I are like hitting the shoreline and then the canoe's spinning around. Now we're going backwards and then we hit the shoreline again. We're just kind of working our way down. And the shoreline was just like tree, these trees in the, in the dirt. And so I said, I told my mom, we got to get out of this river. We got to get out of here. And so we, we pull off to get off on that, the, 
on the edge there. We get out of the canoe, and as soon as we get out of the canoe, we're knee deep in mud. Now we're stuck in mud, and we can't. And I, I wasn't laughing, trust me. At the time, I was freaking out because there was lightning everywhere. I thought we were going to die. Yeah. That was one of the first times I thought we were going to die. Okay. I don't remember even how this ended. Uh, to be honest, I can't remember. We eventually got to the end of the canoe run, and I guess the guys that rented this, the canoe were waiting for us or something. And my sister, my older sister had been there probably waiting for us for an hour because she was with the Boy Scouts. Um, but the, uh, so anyway, flash forward about eight years, uh, 21, 20 years old, so 21 years old. My stepbrother and my, one day my, before I got up to the cottage uh, in Michigan, my stepbrother and my stepfather uh, had gone out in inner tubes on the Manistee. And my mom had dropped them off this one place and then picked and went to this place called, we called the Rollaways, which was a, a sand dune that ended in the river. And we would go there and hang out and there would be a rope you could swing out and drop in the river and kind of just very, you know, very Norman Rockwell like. And uh, again, my chat is totally dead. Isn't that weird? I don't know what the heck is going on. But it is just not, not working. So I'm going to pop out and pop back in and see if it loads again. That was weird. Um, oh, everybody's just chatting in Discord. I could pull up Discord. Um, maybe that's what's happening. Everybody's like, yeah, forget it. Just going to do Discord. Um, so let's see if I can make it so I can see it, though. I need to be able to see the Discord. See, I can't really see that well. Okay, so I'm just, hey, here I am in Discord. Uh, let me see, let me create the link for, oh, well, you know what? That is, it's not going to work because <laughs> for some reason the, the chat isn't working. But I'm going to post it here and see if it shows up. Maybe it'll show up for some people. Anyway, um, so we're losing viewers because of that, but okay. Um, close. So, uh, I see people on the Discord, which is good. All right, so I can do that, kind of. Um, so, we, uh, so my brother, so my, my uh, stepbrother and my stepdad, um, you know, sit in inner tubes in their swimsuits. My mom drops them off in this one place, and they go around the Manistee. And the Manistee is a very snaky river. It winds and winds and winds and winds and winds, right? Um, and so... Um, they get to this place called the Rollaways and my mom's waiting for them and they're like, okay, you know, they get up and they go and they get back to the cabin and they're like going, yeah, that was great, but I wish it were longer. It was only like 30 minutes on the river. It would be nice if it was like an hour and a half would be great. So my stepbrother goes, well, if that's 30 minutes, then that should be an hour and a half. So he goes, okay, so if you, if, you know, my mom drops us off here, and I wasn't on the I wasn't on the river the first time, okay. So, oh, chat's working on the channel for us. Oh, weird. Okay, yeah, I'm not seeing it for some reason. Uh, and hold on. Yeah. So, I um, I went to um, you know I so anyway the the my stepbrother left <laughs> to go back to Indianapolis. And my stepdad was like, well, do you want to do this? And I said, sure, let's do it, you know. And so we're on the Manistee. And so my mom t takes it to that point that my stepbrother kind of went, okay, that would be an hour and a half to the rollaways. And we, you know, we left, I don't remember, maybe like right after lunch. And so she drops us off and we start floating down the river and it's very peaceful and you have no control. You're just in an inner tube and you're just kind of spinning around. But the, the current's taking you down and, you know, when you have to, you can kind of paddle and get to the shore if you need to or whatever. But we're just cruising down there and we're just in our suits. We don't have our wallets, car keys, nothing on us, just our bathing suits. And every now and then a group of canoes will, um, will, will kind of uh, cruise by us. And uh, we're looking, you know, we're just waiting, you know, about an hour. We don't know. We don't have watches on. We don't know how long it's been. But we're thinking it's been about an hour. And Bill is thinking, oh, well, we should come up on that bridge that where your mom dropped us off a couple days ago. And from there, it's a half an hour. And, you know, but you're winding, so you don't really see what's coming. If it were a straight river, you could say, oh, yeah, I see the bridge down there. But we're winding, and 
we come every time we come around a corner, we're expecting to see a bridge, and every corner we turn, there's no bridge. And we turn another corner, and you know, and now it's it's like uh, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what what's supposed. You know, it's like this is getting it's getting old now. My, I'm I'm getting pretty waterlogged down there, and we've probably been on the river at this point in inner tubes for a, a little over three hours, and we still haven't seen the bridge. And we're and now the mosquitoes are coming out. The sun's setting, and the mosquitoes are coming out, and it's starting to get cold. And we keep we keep and we're kind of paddling a little bit, trying to go a little faster. And we get around another corner, and there's no bridge. Finally, we get around another corner, and we see a bridge. And, and Bill goes, "That's not the bridge." <laughs> it's like what? He goes, "Yeah, that's not the bridge your mom dropped us off at." I'm saying, like, "You're kidding." He goes, "No, but there was a an embankment." And it looked like there was a parking lot up high. So we kind of got off there. We climbed up the hill um, with our inner tubes. And we're staying in the, in the parking area. It was just kind of a rest area or something off this road. And it was just gravel. And we're barefoot. <laughs> so we're walking on this gravel. It's like, ow, ow, ow. And this police car pulls up right into the gravel, comes at, right at us and looks at us. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, my mom must have called the police. You know, she's she's called out the cavalry and... Here we are, um, you know, we're, they're going to save us. He pulls up, looks at us, and just drives away. I'm like, what? <laughs> what was that? So we're like, what are we going to do? So we walk, and we get on the road, and we walk. There's a bridge, and on the other side of the bridge is a house. So so I, I we walk over there, and we start walking out, and it's this long drive. You know, these are houses out in the woods, right? So it's a long driveway, and um, a long gravel driveway, and I'm like, ah. I was actually walking in the grass, but kind of half and half. And um, and I get close to the house because we want to use the phone and try to call my mom or something. And there was no cell phones back then. So I don't know what we were thinking we were going to do. But we, we, as soon as I got close to the house, this dog, this Doberman, came barreling out of the house in the backyard and came running. I'm like, yeah. So I'm running in my swimsuit just like running on gravel my feet are just getting shot and the dog was chained thank god it was one of those cartoon dogs that just went ah, like that and the chain got uh, too taut but so finally we, we get back on the road we start walking and we see my mom my mom drives and she slams on the brakes and she goes where the blank have you been <laughs> she was like she could not she could not she was so upset she'd been waiting for us for, gosh, I still don't see any chat, by the way. Um, she was waiting for us for hours. Um, and the sun had set, and we're freezing. <laughs> and uh, we're freezing, and we're, we're just like, we've had it, we're done with it, and we're hanging on these tubes. And so we throw the tubes in the back of the trunk, and we drive, my mom drives us back to the, to the, um, to the cottage, and we, we light a fire in the fireplace. I'm just freezing. I'm like, got clothes on. I got blankets on, and my Bill's freezing. We're sitting by the fire in front of the fire, and she brings, she makes us hot cocoa, and I'm sitting there, and I say, I haven't had that much fun since the last time I was on the Manistee. <laughs> so, at least that, that I found the humor in it. But boy, my mom was so mad. Oh my gosh! But that was crazy. So I don't know that I've been on an inner tube since then. Maybe at a hotel or something with a hotel pool. Um, but that is my Michigan story. And I wish I could see your chats. I'm really bummed that I can't see them. I do not know why. Yo. See, I can say yo and nothing happens. Yo, what up? Um, yeah, yeah. The, everything's weird. Stream settings. Looks good. Enable chats. Weird. Yeah, chat rate, one. What does that mean? The rate of chat is most recently available. To, yeah, I don't know what that means. Huh, stream health. Stream is healthy, it says. That was a half hour ago. Hmm. All right. Well, anyway. So um, I will try to have more of these patterns written out so that we can... Uh, we can kind of, you can practice seeing them and um, and reading the music notation so that it doesn't scare you if you ever see it. But 
Uh, it's not critical for you to know how to read music notation, but it would be great if you could do it. Now, also, I do have, uh, don't forget, I have playlists that are very um, rhythm-centric, uh, strumming groove. I have entire playlists of that kind of stuff. So let me pull it up, and I will post those there. Though I don't see anyone there. You said you see it, so you're able to chat with each other. Sorry if I'm not, if you got a question, post it in the Discord and I'll look for it there right now, okay? Uh, strumming. How many, how many are in? Oh, 20 videos. Yeah, so there's a bunch of stuff in here. I think I've, I think these are pretty well updated, but I'm not sure. Um, I'll put it here in the, here in the, I don't know if you're seeing my chats, that's the thing. And then I'll put it also here in the Discord. Oh, my posts show up, okay. So were there any questions that, um, see Bonnie's having trouble with the chat too. It's weird. Um, Oh, is that Baco Kitty that's asking, uh, hey, anybody know how to print these chords in 12-bar blues? Uh, probably some, somebody there will be able to answer that. Uh, but you can download them. And then what you can do is you can, I would take them and maybe put them into like a, a Word doc and resize them so you can have many of those diagrams, uh, those JPEG, actually P, PNGs. Uh, you can have many of them uh, in different, um, uh, in fact, I can upload those two right now, the, one, the two new ones, okay? So I'm going to the Discord. I'm going to Tom's bookmarks. I'm going to hit, I think, I did, I'm doing this right. Um, here's 16 and 8s. That basically what I just showed you today, what you saw today, they're also in the Discord. Um, and then, so I'm on the general chat. Uh, oh, I see. Maybe that's where the questions are. Okay. Um, boom, 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 boom. So now I'm on the general trend. See, I don't know. I never know which one of these to go to. Um, um, let's see. All right. So um, here we go. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to sign off. It's weird because I'm having little, little issues here with some of the um, live stream. And um, I'm going to, uh, so I posted that and this groove. Both of those are there. If you want to have those, you can add them. What I would do is I would create a, a Word doc for the, what, these will be the acoustic ones for the most part. And these will be the electric ones. They'll look like this. The acoustic ones at first will look like this. Um, and then I'll try to come up with some more variations tomorrow that we'll upload. And then um, we'll pl practice. Also, let me know if that tempo was okay. I think 80 or 90 is probably fine. And then if you can play with a metronome, obviously it doesn't matter if you use a metronome or if you use a, uh, a drum groove or anything like that. But um, anyway, I hope you're all doing well. And I, it's bummer that I can't see. Dang it. You see, you see, yeah, Gary, you say, you see my post. Um, and then, um, oh yeah, I see that. Oh, okay. No worries. Okay. So I will, dang it. It's so weird. Um, so I will, um, be back tomorrow. And we will um, continue. This is what, lesson 53? Holy cow. We'll continue on the strumming thing. I don't know how long we're going to go on this. It may be, who knows, we may be getting back to things. Uh, I know that uh, my wife's not going to be getting back until the fall, which is a drag. Um, but she, because she's a substitute school teacher. So they're all closed down until, they may go back in August. They're talking about going back in August. I know at La Cañada probably will because they're very high achieving schools. So they'll probably be like, no, no, no. Our kids are not allowed to miss that much school. So 
Uh, I'm sure they'll be back sooner than any other district that she works in. But um, the uh, 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 but yeah, so you know, if you're, I'm I'm going to try to make sure we have stuff for acoustic players and electric players. Okay, and then hopefully the, tomorrow the chat will work. That just kind of was weird. It kind of comes and goes. Now probably as soon as I log off, it'll refill everything that you've been saying. <laughs> okay. I will, let's see, end stream. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thanks.